Hey Blue Kitchens, it's Madison Harnish. Welcome back to my friends for another crazy video. I don't know why I thought that would be funny. <laughs> I'm lame. <laughs> Well, we are back into the swing of things with another anti-MLM video because let's just say since my last MLM video, there has been a lot of crazy stuff going on that I definitely need to cover. But before we get into that, I have a few things I wanna let you guys in on and tell you guys about. So first things first, I asked you guys what ideas you had for my new filming setup. If you didn't know, I'm moving soon. Probably will will see me in my new house at around August to September, depending on how things go. I asked you guys ideas for new filming spots since the Blue Kitchen will be going away soon. So these were the most common suggestions you guys had. The first one was to say welcome back to my new kitchen when I first move in instead of blue kitchen. The second one was to create a filming spot and paint it blue and say welcome back to my blue room instead of my blue kitchen. The third was to green screen my, <laughs> my blue kitchen into my videos. And the fourth was kind of similar, create like a blue themed filming setup, but then have a photo of the blue kitchen to kind of pay homage to this old filming background. So yeah, let me know what you guys like the most out of all those options and I will do whatever you guys like. I'm honestly good either way. Either way, it's gonna be like a funny experience and I'm just glad to have you guys with me. And the last kind of thing I'll update you guys on is I recently decided I wanted to do something new and fun in my videos. So at the very end of the video, I'm gonna do a small business shout out. You know, I talk a lot about unethical businesses and scams, but there's a lot of great businesses out there owned by people of color, people that are in the LGBTQ community, and just who are working to create an ethical or sustainable future. And so I really want to shout out those small businesses. So if you know of any really great small businesses to shout out or you have a small business, definitely leave it in the comments below so that I can, you know, shout it out in a video. Now today's video is all about how MLM reps have been reacting to the current events going on in the United States. I'm going to try and talk about some new stuff, but I'm sure a lot of other anti-MLM YouTubers have covered this. But yeah, I'm going to be, I'm also going to really carefully pick my words in this video to not get demonetized or blocked by YouTube because they seem to be doing that lately. I also want to shout out an amazing Instagram account where I found a lot of this information about crazy things that the MLM reps have been saying lately. And that account is MLM Mombi, or it's like MLM Mombi. MLM Mombi. MLM Mombi. Yeah, it's up on the screen. <laughs> so definitely check them out. They have like some serious tea on that page. So you will not be disappointed. Overall, I think the current events that are going on in the United States have really brought out people's true colors and the level of tone deafness that people have. Like, it's crazy. So we're going to examine that. First, though, I want to sing a lovely song also posted by MLM Mombi, and that is, if you're racist and you're fired, that's your fault. If you're racist and you're fired, that's your fault. Yeah, basically. Let's get into the video. Oh, and by the way, if you enjoy deep dives and like to analyze scams and crazy things going on in the internet, chances are you'll probably like this channel. So don't forget to give a thumbs up on this video and subscribe. Well, let's get into the video. So the first post I'm gonna go over is a director at Paparazzi Jewelry Associates posted on a live white power with exclamation points. 
Yikes. White power is an intense word, like with a lot of connotations to it. So to say that, you're really, really showing your true colors here. Also, with a lot of the MLM reps being exposed recently for being like really racist, what are your thoughts on that? Like, why do you think that is? These MLM reps just tend to say such tone deaf things. It's almost like they live in their own little bubble. And I mean, if you look at most MLM reps, they're all the same. Of course, that's why we call them the humbots, but they all have really similar skin tones, really similar lifestyles. And I just think that putting yourself in that type of bubble where you're only associating with people who look like you and have the same job as you and the same kind of lifestyle as you, you're putting yourself in a bubble of ignorance. So when situations like this happen, where you're supposed to be kind of learning outside of your realm of knowledge, it kind of exposes just how ignorant some people are. I mean, you can look at the Arbon White Party and it really says it all. Where's the flavor? Where's the flavor in this? I don't taste anything. Where's the flavor in this? I don't taste anything. You know, white party says it all. I think MLMs in general are not very inclusive. And so you get this really warped mindset. But I almost think a lot of MLM reps don't even realize that. They're just kind of living in their own world and they don't even realize or understand the level of ignorance that they might have when it comes to topics like racial equality but anyways let's look into some more cringe <laughs> so this is another this is a beauty influencer with pharmacy which that's so cringe when you're an mlm rep but you call yourself a beauty influencer let's see what she posted <laughs> People be wildin' on Facebook, straight up wildin' on Facebook. It still blows my mind to this day that posts like this, people just genuinely think are okay. So I definitely wanna cover this. This is an MLM rep that I have been wanting to talk about for a while. She's also with Unique. I guess we're gonna cover her today, but in a very, very bad light. So it all starts when she posts this photo with a caption that says, Maybe I'm considered privileged because I'm white, but I can't tell you one thing for certain. You can't tell us one thing for certain? Okay. I was bullied hard in school by white girls and black girls, and the color of their skin never made it feel any less hurtful. Kind of like that straw man argument thing I've been seeing a lot of information about. Strawman arguments are basically when people are like, bring up a point or an argument and instead of combating or debating with that point, people bring up an entirely different subject that has nothing to do with that subject, yet they act like they're related in some way. When people are saying like, Black Lives Matter and these people are hurting, let's help them, let's lift them up, let's fight for racial equality. And you're like, but I was bullied by people of all different skin tones. Okay, what does that have to do with racial equality? It, it's so funny too, because it's making it like all about them. What's happening right now in the world, in the country, all of a sudden is all about them and their personal experience. Bullying sucks. Stop trying to bully people into thinking how you think. Stop bullying people into seeing your way. So you're trying to tell me that MLM reps never bully people into seeing how they see things or for being anti-MLM or for not wanting to join their pyramid scheme. No one's ever been bullied by not wanting to join your MLM. MLM reps are the biggest bullies and mean girls. You can see it countless times on my channel. That's how they operate. So this whole entire post is just like very hypocritical. Bullying is one of the biggest problems our world is facing and making people feel small, stupid, ignorant, and or wrong for not agreeing with you is a surefire way for us to continue down the path we are currently on. 
If people are trying to tell you like, hey, the way that you're thinking is maybe a little bit ignorant. We're all ignorant on something in some level. But if you actually let down your ego and try and take in what people are saying, you can grow as a person. And that's not bullying. My fridge decided to make a weird noise. Okay, moving on, let's hope that goes away. Tearing people down for not agreeing with your side makes you a bully, no matter what side you're on. What it sounds like more is you're uncomfortable with the way people are making you feel for the viewpoints you have, and so you want to play the victim as if you're being attacked in some way. You are not the victim here. People ended up finding some of the most awful tweets that Marnie Stockhausen made from a few years ago. When I first wake up and look at my phone, I could easily be mistaken for an ugly Japanese girl. But don't bully me. Don't bully me. Kind of sounds like you were the bully. You might need a giraffe while you is counting this cash. Oh gosh. I don't think there is anything as awesome a watching black women in the ocean screaming laughing. Kind of sounds like you have a lot of hate in your heart. After those tweets were dug up and Marnie received backlash for that, she made a post. So apparently Marnie had like affiliate relationships with the companies Goli and La Ange. I definitely pronounced that wrong. But uh, because people reported her old tweets and her kind of hypocrisy, they stopped working with her, which once again, if you're racist and you're fired, that's your fault. Like, racism in the workplace should not be tolerated. Racist comments and racist remarks goes hand in hand with employee harassment. Like, it's not acceptable in any workplace or in any professional environment. I don't know why people like are struggling to understand that all of a sudden. So this is what Marnie Stockhausen has to say. This hate group I'm dealing with have taken it upon themselves to email companies I've collabed with and proudly post and laugh about it. No, it's called <laughs> accountability. Laughing about it, no one's laughing about it, although the irony is funny. These companies responded to their emails but never once messaged me about anything before taking action. This victim mentality, it is what it is. You posted some, some pretty bad tweets in the past. What do they need to contact you about besides just being like, hey, did you say these things? And having her say, no, I didn't, and try and explain it away. There's nothing to explain. I don't know how I feel. Upset that I wasn't given a chance to explain myself. Or hurt because these people are making it their mission to crush everything I have worked years for. Oh honey, you did that on your own. Mostly just sorry though. What you post on the internet innocently as a young teenager lives there. I just love how she's like subtly trying to slide in like all of this victim mentality. Like I was young, I didn't know any better. At the end of the day, you did offend people. You have to look at that and understand that perspective and be like, wow, let me take that in and grow as a person. And if I receive consequences for my actions, that's life. Like the fact that you're talking about this whole situation as if you are above receiving consequences for your actions kind of shows how privileged you are. Mostly, I'm just sorry though. What you post on the internet innocently as a young teenager lives there. So learn from my mistake, friends. You can't take back what you've typed, even with the most innocent intentions. Innocent intentions? You're really gonna say that about those posts.
Whoever felt the need to dig those tweets from 2013 up has been sitting on them for quite some time and were quite clearly unbothered by them, as was anyone else that followed my account until current events unfolded. I messed up, plain and simple, but I will not allow bullying to stop me from doing what I love, which is bringing light and love into this world. Yeah, it sure seems like that's what you love to do. She's calling it bullying, which just shows that she's not self-reflective enough to understand the situation. It's not bullying if what you did was wrong and people are calling you out for that or holding you accountable. I am taking serious legal action at this time to have these hate platforms addressed hate platforms, bullying. To say that's hate for just posting information about bad things that you have said, I don't get the logic. In the meantime, I am sad to say I am no longer working with Goli and Laange and have to admit I'm quite disappointed that they didn't reach out to me personally because I highly doubt they would excuse this type of behavior either. Talk to me about everything, I'm misunderstood, everything's about me. <sighs> so here's a lip sense distributor. Yeah, just read that. This lip sense distributor is literally one of the most ignorant people I've seen in a long time, but most importantly, hateful. I, I can't help but look at posts like this and see like the underlying tone of just pure hate. And that definitely hurts my heart a lot, especially because it seems like people are following her and looking towards what she's saying. I'm about to show these underprivileged people what balls are. They are so full of hatred. No, you are full of he hatred, Lisa Morris. She also claims that since she is a working white woman, she doesn't have privilege. Just the whole idea of joining a pyramid scheme is a very privileged thing to do. Like, just think about it. You have to invest money up front to join this MLM business opportunity. People who don't have white privilege can't just like work hard and hustle from their phone and not make any money for a while. That's a very privileged thing to do. It's a very privileged position to be in. And then of course, calling people thugs. And she also seems to be extremely homophobic. At the end of the day, you can even have your own personal viewpoints, but when you are openly posting and spreading those viewpoints at the workplace, MLM reps work on Facebook. They work on social media. That's their workplace in a way. For some people, Facebook is private and separate from work life, and they're still being held accountable for what they say online. But for MLM reps, it's even worse because Facebook is literally their workplace. So if they're like spreading hateful ideologies, racism, sexism, any sort of discrimination or harassment of any type on Facebook, that's their workplace. So to me, it becomes an even bigger deal of workplace harassment or workplace discrimination when they post this type of stuff. But on a lighter note, this is just... <sighs> on a lighter note, but still like, wh what? This is just like some of the most tone deaf, tone deaf. You'll see why that's a pun later on. Um, stuff that I've seen from MLM reps yet. And it's this trend going on with Unique, the MLM makeup company called Beauty Has No Skin Tone, where white women are putting darker foundation shades on their face, posting it and saying beauty has no skin tone. Talk about tone deaf talk about tone deaf. So let's look at some of those posts. In this photo, like she thinks she's doing something. She thinks she is solving racism by putting all of these darker skin tone shades on her face. 
can this to me just shows like how much so many people like need help they just need help they clearly do not understand anything about racism if they think that this is a genuine solution or a show of support another one i love the writing on the chest beauty has no skin tone once again, really thinking they're doing something here. I don't even know what to say at this point. Especially to the white woman that just post like a half orange face and a half white face. Like not only does it expose how tone deaf and ignorant they are, but it also exposes how orange the deep shades of Unique are. Like, that is orange. It is exposing how awful that foundation is on top of everything else. And this one, I'm just like, why did you choose that shape on your face? Let's take a look at the unique foundation shades. Yeah, really inclusive real inclusive how about before trying to create this like fake shady campaign trying to act as if you're in support of black lives and the black lives matter movement how about like just actually release better foundation shades for people of color or deeper skin tones like and the last thing that i'll go over in this video even though there are like i said there's so many just crazy things that have been uncovered or that crazy things that MLM reps have been doing lately. And there's a lot of great YouTubers that go into a lot more than this. doTERRA has, it looks like a car window sticker that says just breathe by doTERRA, which doTERRA is an essential oil MLM company. A rep says, just imagine if someone would have knelt beside hashtag George Floyd and said this, how different it all would be. It's just crazy to me that they seem to have no idea how awful of a thing this is to say. Another doTERRA rep saying they have a breathe essential oil and you already know where this is going. They said, if this week has taught us anything, it's to not take being able to breathe for granted. Okay, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. Done. So that's uh, the recent tea on MLM Huns and how they are 100% so much worse than I thought they were. Like, my mind has just been like anti-MLM YouTubers, Instagram accounts, just all that. Sometimes I reflect on it and I'm like, are we being too harsh? Does there need to be a more loving and understanding approach to all of this? And while I definitely think that love and unity is always the answer, some of this stuff that MLM reps have been posting lately and doing just misunderstanding what's going on in the world coming from a place of white privilege and not understanding what that means it's disheartening and at the end of the day as i've kind of said throughout this video mlm reps are representing their mlm company so what they say and do matters a lot it's a representation of the companies that they are promoting you can't say it's not so if you're like me and you care about racial equality uh, I just want to reiterate at the end of this, this is not all a trend. We have to take this as a huge learning moment, especially for people who haven't been exposed to racial problems in the United States. You have to just take that in and continue learning and growing and having tough conversations, calling out racist posts and comments that we see online, not being afraid to do that, not being afraid to have tough conversations with our family members, and not being afraid to be told that we're wrong in our approach or the way that we're doing something. I'm gonna try and stay hopeful that 
change can happen, that self-reflection is possible. Stay tuned, in a few seconds I'm gonna highlight the small business for this video. And I hope you guys are staying safe and doing well, even with all the current events going on in the world. And until next time, have a good one.